Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Sparks, back again with my part time co host, Curtis Harmon. Hello, everybody. So, we're, uh, he, he left a few Glenn Fittick over here, so we're going to knock out a couple of these. Yeah. All right. So it's what funny, we're just wearing the same thing we wore last time. I know, man. Maybe so, your, your Patreon supporters need to step up a little bit. We can buy you a new shirt. <laughs> man, I've been, I've, been having, I, dude, I've been having this shirt since, like, 2005. Wow. Yeah. I've got a couple of those hanging around in my closet that just they just don't seem to go away. Yeah. Well, it was there was a period of time where I got too fat for it. Yeah. And I couldn't wear it, so been I there. went into storage. And then I... I got to a point where I was like, oh, hey, like, I can wear these clothes again. And then I got too skinny for it. And yep. now I'm back to the point where I'm just fat enough. <laughs> so while he pours that up, I'm going to go ahead and read this one out. So this is uh, Glenfiddich Project XX. 20 Mines, One Unexpected Whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah. So it says 20 Mines, One Unexpected Ooh, Whiskey. Heavy. I might have to split some of that with you. <laughs> It's got tasting notes on the side. I'll read those oh, off cool. afterwards. Uh, goodness. So, <clears throat> Glenfiddich Experimental Series pushes whiskey boundaries and challenges tradition. Brian Kinsman. He must be their kinsman. Must be. Uh, our malt master conducted one of the most exciting malt experiments in Glenfiddich's 130-year history. We should be excited about this. Man. Excited. With two X's. Shrouded in secrecy, its code name was XX. <laughs> Good thing it wasn't triple X. Right, that would be weird. Yeah. Vin Diesel would have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> he invited 20 whiskey experts from 16 countries to the Glenfiddich. 16 countries? Jesus. To the Glenfiddich Distillery, Brian gave each of these experts complete freedom to explore the warehouse and choose any single cask of Glenfiddich whiskey that intrigued them the most. So, the final 20 chosen cast represented some of the most astonishing whiskeys under our care. In Brian's words, I wanted to create an unexpected whiskey. Traditionally, every malt whiskey is chosen and vatted by one malt master to their taste, but I wanted to experiment and marry 20 totally unusual Glenfiddich malts together. This whiskey is a recreation of that extraordinary initial small... Did you get? Did, did you catch that? Yeah. That's why I kind of gave you the, the one eyebrow thing. Yeah, okay, so this is technically, so he he didn't have 20 people come in and pick different and then barrel those. Right. And vat those whiskeys. This is a recreate. This is not the greatest and best song in the world. <laughs> this is a tribute. Right. Fuck. I, just, I think when, when we did this one on the podcast, I think I made the point, or maybe it was you or Aaron, somebody made the point of it's, it's kind of ballsy of a of a you know the the head motherfucker in charge be like hey all you other people that have opinions come over here to my rick house and let's oh, work yeah. together you know what i mean that's yeah. a, good on him for that you know for opening himself up for going so, hey i don't know everything right so i'm i venture to say that that this whiskey smells like it has some age to it even though there's no age statement on this bottle Ooh, we like there's it's got some it's got some it 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 has some time spent in barrels. I was gonna say it has a depth to it. It's now. not a three year old whiskey by any means. The other one that we tried, the uh the IPA one, that that seemed very light and young mm -hmm. and it didn't have the depth. The nose didn't have the same depth. Is this one forty three as well? Forty seven. Forty seven. Yeah. Forty seven percent. A little better. A little bit right. better. Ninety four move that ninety four proof. I'd like to see some of these come out just you know get hot man i want to yeah i want i really wish and there's a lot of there's a lot of scotch distilleries who have barrel proof uh expressions in fact no i don't have a glenfiddich barrel proof or a cast strength is what they would call it uh but i'm i'm all about the cast strength like i want to taste it coming straight out the barrel yeah as it should be right so in its purest form yeah I think there's a lot lost in that. Of course, I don't know. I mean, everybody, like when I first started doing this thing, man, I didn't care for the hot ones. But as mm -hmm. I've gone on, it's like, hey, I feel like I'm getting, a, like you said, a truer feel for what the whiskey yeah. actually is. Let me water it down if I want to. Exactly. Right. And, I, and I mean, the whole reason why they started bringing the proof down, well, not the whole reason. Part of the reason was just for palatability. Mm -hmm. For your average person, they're not going to be able to handle 100 proof whiskeys. Right. Plus, I mean, 
you tend to make a bit more money when you water it down. Right. You can sell more product. Now you're stretching it out. Yeah. This one, um, I think I, I think I remember this from when we did it on the podcast. For whatever reason, this one has like some rye notes that I keep t- I get keep getting like a hay and a little bit of spice in there that to me is reminiscent of a of a rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. That, that, that this is my palate, but I remember that from when we did this before. There's a lot of hay field going on in there. Well, back whenever I first got into scotch, my opinion. Uh, I was drinking rye whiskey, a lot of rye whiskey, before I got into scotch. So I think it's an easy transition. If you're big into rye, then you probably will like a lot of single malt scotches because they have similar profiles. Yeah. I mean, rye and barley, I mean, yeah, they're different, but it's it's not as big of a change as corn. There you go. Per se. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's a left turn I mean, from one of those. I don't Is corn technically a grain? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. And I, don't, and I really don't know either, but I mean, where I think the grain profile of rye and the grain profile of barley might have a lot more similarities yeah. than corn. Corn is just all sweet. Right. This, I, I'm not getting a whole lot of smoke No. on this one. I mean, there's a little earthy stuff going on and a, and a hint of maybe some smoke on the nose, but I don't get any smoke. Or really, I don't really get any smoke or much peat on the palate either. Mm-mm. So if you're if you're wanting to dip into scotch and you're like, man, I don't want them heavily peated some bitches. Yeah. Maybe go. Maybe Glenfiddich's that way. Just in general, maybe maybe Glenfiddich is not a heavily peated, heavily smoky. Well, see, uh, it depends on who you ask. Because back whenever I first got into scotch, uh, 2014, 2015 time frame. I would. I, I was on Glenfiddich. That was the progression I was taking. And at this time, I was drinking Glenfiddich. Well, I had some in a flask, mm-hmm. and I was out and about. And I pulled my flask out, took a sip out of it, and I handed it to a buddy of mine. And he took a sip out of it. And he said it tasted like cigars, like cigar smoke. Yeah. And so it. I think it depends on the person who's drinking it. Right. And what they're doing at the time. He's a smoker. Yeah, and they're they're what is it called where you have like a like you have a data bank of different smells and tastes and Mm -hmm. so as you you know drinking whiskey and tasting whiskey is subjective that's why i think it's a like what we do on the podcast i Mm -hmm. feel like they get three different views from three different angles and you know you kind of go okay well i align with with kelly or i align with you know bz or whoever right so for me on this one i mean it just it just stands up because when i was a kid i you know bailed and hauled hay and course as a kid in the country you stick a straw in your mouth that chewing on like a piece of like i guess it's alfalfa grass i don't know what the fuck Mm -hmm. it's made out of anyways whatever that is that straw hay i mean it just it just screams that to me it's hard for me to to catch anything else it does have an earthiness to it for sure i mean there's a little spice on the very like very faint just for like a half a second on the finish there's a little spicy thing going on I, i prefer this one over the ipa for sure i do too which I thought it, you know, for me is weird because I enjoy a good IPA, yeah. and maybe that's why I don't like it so much because my my brain's going, "Hey, give me that hop," yeah. you know, yeah, and right. it really doesn't deliver that too much. Um, and that's why, I, like, I, I and that's part of the reason why I went away from my rating system, mm-hmm. just because, like, I could love this and you could hate this doesn't make it a bad whiskey, you know right. what I mean? So uh, I know a lot of people who follow a lot of the the hardcore subscribers. They kind of know if from them testing stuff and then watching my videos, right. they see a new video and 95% of the time they align with what I'm saying. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's probably a pretty good one. Like right. A lot, a lot of people jumped on the... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're doing a, a thing that's, you know, a service to, you know, the whiskey community at large, you know, and I think we're a small part of that, you know, on the podcast. Again, like I said, you're getting three opinions on it we still do the rating system maybe we'll go away from that you know over time i think we're kind of doing that with a would you suggest somebody Mm -hmm. to spend x amount of dollars on this whiskey right and hopefully over time people are figuring out kind of my palate and they're they'll align with one of the three of us yeah (coughs) excuse me um but again i think what you're doing on your channel is a is a service to the whiskey community i know other people are doing it you know you're not the only guy on the internet doing this yeah but i think you might be the only dude on youtube that's doing it every damn day Probably. <laughs> Probably. 
I'm at least putting something out every day. Right. Like, I mean, it might be some recycled stuff or yeah, but still an experiment or two. Like what's cool about the recycling? Like I'm seeing you do, like you do your last sips and mm -hmm. it's something that you maybe did <clears throat> 60, 80 videos ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Like you've told us many times, your palate's going to change mm -hmm. over time. I mean, even day to day, oh, yeah. morning to evening. What you eat. Right. Yeah. So it's cool to have those revisits on other ones. You can go, you know what? The last time I had this, it didn't really, it didn't do nothing for me. But this time today, for whatever yeah. reason, the stars and the moons aligned and I'm mm -hmm. loving it. Yeah. The cosmos has come into mm -hmm. play. <laughs> so. Told you, this is breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Stomach is over here. Growing. Yeah, right. Well, I think I think that's it on this one. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Would you would you seventy bucks for that one again? Now that I've tasted it, probably not. But I I would recommend it to somebody else. Agreed. Uh, for sure. Like I said, I mean, in the last video, I mean, if I'm gonna buy a scotch, it's probably gonna be something that's heavily peated. Mm -hmm. uh, and but now that I have the what's the, what's a good term for that the the memory bank or the yeah. the experience right i you could, stored it away yeah, yeah it's could, back here i could basically uh so i've done this several times at the, the liquor store and usually it's my my go-to uh <laughs> i use it as a uh, a way to talk to pretty women <laughs> nothing wrong with that spin game so, however you can get there so and this person might actually see this and I don't I'm not gonna mention any names but I saw this woman over looking at the the whiskeys mm -hmm. just like looked not, like she had no idea yeah, what she was doing during the headlights like yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at <laughs> and I was just like hmm and then I just kind of saunter Sup, over girl? saunter over to her and no yeah I was a little more subtle than that and I was just <laughs> like so uh who are you shopping for ah uh, trying to yeah, get that yeah, out of the way yeah, first yeah she's like uh looking trying to find something for my husband and i was like oh, okay cool cool i was like well what does he drink yeah i was like what is he currently drinking she's like well he's more of a wine drinker and uh, i was like okay what kind of wine yeah so i was asking some informative questions right you get the reds you get yeah. the whites because the whites are sweet the reds are dry let's and, go uh, yeah let's figure and it out i was like well for a wine drinker i was like he, i was like what's your what's your what's your budget here uh -huh. and she's like well like 40 50 bucks and i was like that's a good middle yeah. of the road budget and i said well for a little bit more you could find something really special that is going to have higher proof that's you know, it's going to give them some more flavor so i ended up pretty much selling her on a bottle of uh, uh maker's mark private select because okay. they finish them in different types of wine barrels okay. well not they, they they take the staves they take different staves from different types of barrels like uh french oak uh a bunch of different stuff it's pretty cool stuff that's kind of trippy yeah yeah um so if you see it on the shelf and what's what the cool thing about that is it's, it's actually one of my favorite uh, expressions from Maker's Mark. And I know I'm getting off topic here. Uh, but, absolutely on topic as yeah, far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> so they'll they'll take staves from different types of barrels, different types of wood. Okay. All right. And then they'll remake a barrel with certain staves in it and it'll give it different flavor profiles. Right on. So it's pretty cool. And I like seeing stuff like that. We've talked about that on the podcast, like seeing these people just really get get out there and experiment with things and see mm -hmm. what happens because i think a lot of times people get bogged down and that's why I, I really wanted to follow this this experimental series with glenfiddich because i think a lot of times whiskey makers they they feel like this pressure from you know like the old timers you know mm -hmm. when you say it that way to stay consistent stay in your lane you know what i mean make me a product that i've been knowing for 50 years let's see if bonnie shows up hey we're doing a test folks we're gonna see if bonnie comes running I hear the click and clack in here. She's, gonna be, she's like, mm. it's time. What are you doing? Why are you limping? <laughs> she's in here, boy. She's limping. She's probably freaking her foot's asleep. Oh, I thought she laid down. Hey, you want to sip? You want to sip, Bonnie? Oh, that's a big pour. That is a big pour. Give her a heavy pour. Come here. There she she's is. She's like, she doesn't like the new high table. Get, get up in there. Get up in there. No, <laughs> she's like, it's hard to reach. You know, like St. Arnold? She's like, well, she's I, like, yeah, it's I don't Arnold. not like it. All right, I think that's all we got on this one. Uh, Bonnie's going to finish this beer. Uh, the whole beer. Yeah. Chug it, bitch. Are you 18 years old, Bonnie? Oh. 21. Uh, she's pretty close to 20 Getting by there. now. She's... You little underage she, drinker. Yeah, she's uh, she's, <laughs> she's pushing... She, she'll be pushing five years old next year. No, that's close enough. Yeah. 
That's close your, enough. Your gun is digging into my hip. Anyway, that's all we got. Um, thanks for watching. Oh yeah, the the lady. I, I reconnected with her. Yeah, right. He's only why don't you? I reconnected with the lady who bought the Maker's Mark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's is she the, dying over there right now? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Everything. So I reconnected with her and asked her how her husband liked the Maker's Mark Prophet Slayer. Yeah. She's like, he loved it. So right I was on. like, See, that's what's cool about the whiskey community because, you know, obviously you, you see a lady standing over there and you're like, hmm, maybe there's something here and you go, hey, what's, uh, who are you buying for? Because yeah. there's some people that have been like, well, I'm buying for my husband. And like, oh, well, just pick out whatever is fucking $30 and walk the fuck off. Yeah, right. You know, but being a... a being Old a Hobble of, Creek. <laughs> right. Being a, a part of the whiskey community, that's what's fun about it and that's why I like it is most people are just generous, you know, and kind-hearted and want to make everybody feel welcome yeah. in it because you could have easily pissed that lady off and turned her and her husband both away from whiskey wholesale oh yeah 100%. you know you could have been a dick or whatever yeah. but you're like okay there's no chance here for a connection but here's some knowledge right yeah. here's here's me putting out in the world a good vibe and and if anything i, I mean she's going to turn other people on to it because i told her i have a whiskey channel and right told her about that and i didn't mention the bearded idiots podcast because you never know who's listening <laughs> right exactly <laughs> But, alright, all right, we're going to get out of here. Don't forget, check the description below for all the links to everything. To uh, my Teespring page, order a shirt for me. Help support us. Yeah, straight. Uh, word. Help support Bonnie. I need to buy her food. Uh, <laughs> and feed, more beer, apparently. Feeding her beer for the last month. Uh, yeah, check the description. All the links are down there. And uh, check out the Bearded Idiots. So Definitely do that. Yeah. Like always, folks, drink some whiskey, share with your friends and family, don't drink and drive, be safe. Alcoholism is not a funny thing, mm -hmm. so don't do it. Right, I yeah. agree. Y'all have a good night.